What's up guys? So I want to do a quick one for you guys before I leave for the day. I got this Nissan behind me. A um, little bit of a backstory. The customer came in. Um, she's actually she's actually a girl I, I met before. She she brings me tacos. She works at the taco joint down the street. Um, so she delivers the tacos. We were talking about her car a couple weeks ago. This thing, she was telling me the issues. Uh, what is this, 2006 Nissan Altima. She would start it up, it would start up fine, drive to wherever she needs to drive to, and then uh, you know go inside, shop, whatever, come back outside and she'll get a no start. It'll crank and no start. Um, you know, I'm thinking right away, you cam crank and all that stuff. So I tell her to bring it in, you know, anybody, anybody that walks through my door is a potential customer. You know, I, the UPS man, I've worked on his car, the mailman worked on his car. You know, I, I mean, I've had customers come in asking for directions and I, next thing you know, I'm working on their car for crying out loud, they're a customer. So, you know, you walk through my doors, you risk being a customer, it's just how it is. But we got to talking, she got it, she got it down here the other day. Um, I started to look at it a couple days ago, but then just had stuff to do. She said she's not too worried about getting it back, but I spent a couple, uh, I spent a couple minutes on it and uh, just wanted to take you guys through it. There's not a whole lot of information on YouTube as far as lab scopes go and uh, kind of where to connect the leads. I'm going to do a quick uh, cam crank correlation on here just to kind of take you guys through, show you guys where I hook up the leads, what I do. Um, I want to show you just some quick tips as far as the various, you know, the, the four channel lab scope that I use. A couple quick tips. I'm not going to try to drag this video out and make it super long, but I just want to, uh, I just want to show you guys kind of the things that, uh, you know, the things that I do to set it up, kind of set up, and then what to look for as far as looking for, you know, like a good signature. This is a square waveform sensors, you know, they're Hall effect sensors, Hall sensors. So I mean, it's it's pretty cut and dry. Um, but uh, let's get into this thing, guys. I want to show you guys kind of how I set up this scanner real quick and uh, set up this lab scope to, you know, check this correlation. Right, guys so real quick I got uh, this is a 2.5 Nissan Altima I got the uh, my yellow trace right there is going to the uh, cam sensor on the side of the head there basically you just hook it up to the you know the signal wire coming out I like to uh, you know I'll ground this side of the lead out to ground and then uh, my, my crank sensor is in the back and uh, kind of hard to get to and then a, a weird funky plug um, so what I did is for the crank sensor, I got the green trace here. I went straight to the ECU on that. I found the pin out. I think it was pin number 13 or 14 or whatever. And I got the crank sensor pinned right there, back probe right there. So got the Varus here. Basically hook up this, you know, hooking up, hook up your leads. What I do is I'll uh, yellow channel one. You got your green channel two. And then the yellow got the uh, ground. Plug that into ground. And then you got your, uh, my yellow's also grounded to the battery. So here's my ground for the, uh, the green here. Hook them together. I'd like to do it like that as opposed to having a bunch sticking out. Um, you know, risk breaking it and all that stuff. You just get a good ground there. So get this thing fired off. I want to show you guys. Um, something in here, the guided component test. So real quick, we could get a quick reference of what, you know, what a known good signature looks like. It's pretty cool information in here. Uh, 2006 Nissan Altima 2.5. Yes. We'll go to engine. First we'll check the cam sensor signature test and it shows you what a known good signature looks like. So that's pretty cool. All the information is here. You know, you'll get your, uh, you know, it tells you, you know, your ground one for the, for as far as the harness side goes, the center one pin two is your signal out and then you got your power. And then you could also, if you're testing them one at a time, you could hook your lead up to it and go to view meter and it'll show you, 
you can you know crank it or run it and it'll show you uh, you can compare it so that's kind of cool this is all built in here and then you could go back and do the crank signature um, shows you where the pins are same deal and then here you go it's a times 16 I believe so that's a full revolution right there and then the same thing you could view meter and compare it so just a quick tip I saw I'll sometimes reference this you know they're not all in here but there is there is a good amount I mean you got a good amount in here you know so if you know where the pins are in the ECU you know you could always pin it and then get a good signature so but let's go back go to scope meter we'll set up our times and uh, voltage and all that stuff for channel lab scope there's all our scopes. We're only using two, so we'll turn these two off, and then uh, I'll I like to filter it so you don't see our any of the noise. You get a nice clean signal. Filter the green. There you go. And then we'll set our volts. Um, I like to see a little bit at the top and a little bit at the bottom. We got two on here, so we'll go maybe uh, t 20 volts on both of them. And then we'll set our time. We'll get uh, we'll get a lot of data at first to show. I have a feeling this thing's going to start because it's been sitting. But there we go. We're all set up there. We sh that should show a, a decent amount of data. Let me get you guys set up on the tripod here, and then I'll go crank this puppy. All right, I got you guys all set up in view. Now let me crank this. See if it starts. It's probably going to start. Alright guys, so we got a no start, I'm not sure what that looked like, so we'll go back and hopefully we could kind of get this. So you can see, you can see on the, the yellow one, the yellow trace, the cam, you can see each cylinder here, the firing order, you know, cylinder number two, and then one, here's the beginning of it, one, next frame, then three will fire, then two, then f what, four? There's four, so you can see the firing order here, but this is exactly what I was talking about. This is what I was getting earlier, and then it started. All right, guys, so pretty much what we're looking at here, the correlation between the cam and the crank, you can see this is cylinder number two. Here's the end of a, the crank resolution, revolution, and the beginning of it, these lines here should be, in, should be touching. You know, the beginning of that one and the end of this one should be intersecting each other, and they're not, they're off. So the correlation is bad. Um, I like to always test it on cylinder number one. Let's get on, that's four, two, where's one at? And they're pretty spaced apart and blown up, so you can kind of get some good detail here. Where's number one at? I'll probably redo this and blow it up. See, it tried to start, you can see it started, it tried to start here. They're grouped together and the correlation is, is, is touching. You can see the lines going through. And then you move up a little bit here where it's, it's just cranking and you can see they're not touching anymore. So that's a bad cam crank correlation there. But where is number one? Here's number one. So right here, you can see, you know, they're not touching, they're not intersecting. This should be, you know, that should share the same line there. That should be the same line. They should overlap each other. So that's how you check your cam crank correlation. Let's try to start this again. Let's see if I could get it to start. We can see a good one, a really good one. You guys got a good view there. Let's see if it turns over now. Still nothing. Let's see, we'll go back. Yeah, and they're not intersecting there. I got to get this thing to start. Um, let's, uh, so you could see here where it tried to start, you could see they're intersecting there. I mean, they're grouped together more, they're smaller. You can see number one, it shares the same line. 
I should set a trace so we could see this. But yeah, that shares the same line. So basically every gap is where your beginning fire is. That's, that's, a, that's a good signature. But we could blow this up a little bit and uh, record it again to get a better uh, get a better data. So here, this is where it starts to lose it. Right? So it started to run. And then it cut off spark because it's, the correlation started to go off. So it's going to cut off our spark and injector pulse. There's number one, it's off. They, you know, that should, those lines should share the same. But here, let's, uh, let's see, let's slow this down. Or let's, let's, uh, let's unplug the, uh, I'm going to unplug the, uh, the coolant temp sensor to make it think it's a cold start. Let's see if it starts then. All right, so I got the uh, coolant temp sensor unplugged. Let's see if it starts now. Recording. So when it's a cold start, it only looks for one signal, but we can see a good one. So let's pause this. And you can see number one, it shares that same line. Actually, I'm going to blow it up more. Let's get it even closer. Get it even closer here. Stop it, and you can see it's sharing the same line there. You can see there's no gap there. Exactly when the when the when the crank resolution starts, revolution starts, the uh, the cam one fires. So that's a good signature there. Let's see where we're at now. Yeah, it's still off a little bit, but that's that's probably within range to start it. When it gets further away, out of no start, I mean that that's probably enough to start it. Like that one's good. I don't like this. I'm gonna zoom out. That's too close. coming out of there you can see I mean that's a that's a good one where the lines intersect there you know they're sharing the same lines there that's a good correlation but on a no start you guys can clearly see that there's too much of a gap so so yeah guys I just wanted to do a quick one kind of how I use the lab scope and you know where to set up your uh, your leads when you're testing you know signals and all that stuff um, you know always make sure you got a good solid ground for your leads and all that but I'm probably gonna sell uh, I don't think uh, she actually had the cam and crank sensors done I went ahead and ordered them earlier today thinking that's what it was but then when I looked at it closer you could see someone had it done she mentioned someone was working on it she had two other guys two other mechanics looking at it now I don't know if it's mechanics she knew or actual shop she went to but uh, you could obviously see those are the updated cam and crank uh, sensors. They're not the plastic ones, they're the metal ones that I got from Nissan, but I'm not gonna bother putting it on there. I could clearly see on a, cold, on a cold start, you could clearly see when you finally get it to run, you could see that the correlation, it, it's off. It should be sharing that same line on there when you're looking at it. Um, I have got this thing to start warm and you can see it does share the same line. So I know what a known good one is. When it does start on its own, this thing has a problem starting hot and that's basically when it's gonna do it. You know, it's gonna depend on the timing advance when it starts warm. Starts cold, obviously it's gonna advance it and it doesn't really look for a signal because it doesn't care if the correlation's good. It starts it, revs it up and all that till it warms up, then your idle will come down. But I believe she probably has a, you know, a, a worn out timing chain. The phaser probably uh, is all messed up probably not advancing like it should because she actually had low oil when she came in here the oil was all mucky and you know and, and it looks like she's never did an oil change on it so the phaser is probably not advancing like it should 
but I'm pretty confident that a chain's gonna fix it. I'm gonna go ahead and price her out a chain, a phaser, a tensioner, you know, a timing job on this. Uh, see if she'll wanna do it. I know it'll fix her problem. Um, you know, fix some of the wires there that I had probed into and all that stuff. See if she wants to do it, and I'm pretty certain it's gonna fix this issue she's having. So, didn't wanna make this video too long, guys. Hope you guys like the tips on the Varus that I use, or you guys knew about the tips. You guys got any tips, leave them down in the comments for everybody. As always, guys, like, comment, subscribe. We'll catch you in the next one. Signing out.